Good morning guys. Today we're going to check out more Docker and we're going to start to look at some storage inside Docker because one of the issues we've got with Docker is we don't have permanent storage by default. So anything you do inside a Docker container when you stop and start it um, or delete that container and restart it, all the information inside there is going to be lost. So we're going to do a couple of quick examples here with Nginx uh, and then we're going to move on to container instances in Azure and see how that permanent storage actually works inside container instances. So let's start off with a whiteboard and then we're going to do a bit of live demos with Docker. We're going to do some live demos with container instances to show you how all of this is put together and how it's all actually going to work for you. So. First of all, let's go straight over to the whiteboard. Now over here, if we've got a Docker image, say for example, we've got an image like Nginx, which is just a very basic web server. This Nginx is actually gonna have contained inside it an index.html file, okay, just a default file. That's gonna be running inside a container on my computer and I'm gonna be able to connect to it. Let's just do that now very quickly. So I have my terminal over here and I have Docker actually installed on my computer. So if I very quickly do docker run uh, dash d dash p, so dash d is for daemon, run this in the background, dash port is going to be the port that I'm connecting to. So 5000 is the external port, the one that I will connect to. Port 80 on the other hand is the internal port, which is what Nginx is running on. And I'm just going to run Nginx. So it can't find that locally, it's going to download that for me and run that container on this computer and we'll connect to it in the browser and we'll have a look at what we've got. So over here in the browser, if I connect to 127.001, port 5000, I've got welcome to Nginx. That's the actual Nginx default web page that's built in there, okay? So since this is actually a uh, container that runs Linux, it does have a file system inside it. So if I connect to this container, we can go and see that file system. So if I currently look at my running containers, that Nginx container is running with a default name here of elated underscore swords. If I go and run this command, which is docker exec it, this is exec interactive, I can connect the inside of this container. Now we are inside that Nginx container. And what I can do is I can do an ls on here and I can go and start to see some of the information inside the container. We can go and find that index.html file and see what it looks like. So if I go into slash user slash share, ls that one, we should find inside here, I've got, where are we? Uh, I should have nginx here. There we go, nginx. So if we just go cd nginx, and go into HTML, I should find inside here, my index.html file. So if I just cat that, uh, you'll be able to see this is the same welcome to nginx file. Now I could go in and change this if I wanted to actually inside the container, but I've got a better idea. I want to copy something into there. So here on VS Code, for example, I have an index.html file. I want to copy this into this running container to replace that existing index.html. So essentially from the whiteboard, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this index, whoops, this index .html file and I'm going to copy that into the running container and overwrite this index.html with this new index.html file. Okay, so that's quite easy to do. All I need to do is just exit this container out and if I just do ls again, you'll see that I'm currently in that docker demo directory with that index.html. And what I can do now is I can do docker cp for copy and I can just go and copy that index.html to the current running container and the current path inside that container. So remember, the container was called elated underscore swartz. So we're going to copy that, we're going to paste that down here, we're going to put a colon in, and then what we're going to do is we're going to paste in the path where I want to copy this to, which is that, okay? So by doing that, that's now overwritten that index.html inside the container. So if I go back and refresh that web page now, we should find there's my Docker is awesome page. That's great, but there's a problem here. If I go and stop and start this container now, so if we open this up on Docker desktop to make it a little easier, let's go and just delete this. And now I go and rerun it. So let's go all the way back in our commands to this command, docker run nginx. In fact, you know what? This time I'm even going to give this a name. So we're going to say dash dash name is nginx. Okay. 
and we're going to run that and now we refresh again welcome to nginx not good so one of the things we can do here is we can create something called docker volumes so if we get rid of this get rid of this get rid of this so we know that inside here there is this path user share nginx html slash index.html what we can do is we can actually create something called a docker volume now a docker volume is like a virtual hard drive for all intents and purposes, it's basically a folder. And what we can do is we can create one of these on our local computer and we can do a map, okay? So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this directory path here and we're going to redirect the contents of this directory path to this Docker volume, which is sitting on my hard drive. That means if I deleted and recreated my Nginx container, as long as I reconnect directly to the same volume every single time, which has my new index, has my index.html inside there. So let's go and produce that process now. So back to my Docker desktop, I'm just going to remove this container again, and I'm going to pop into this volume section over here, and I'm going to create a volume. I'm just going to call this my Nginx store okay and we're going to create that volume on my computer docker manages all of this for me there's a default directory path where it stores these uh, and they're not going to be deleted unless i tell them to be deleted now all i need to do is come over here and modify this command just a little bit okay we just need to come in here and put a dash v flag on the end of this v for victor or in this case v for volume so on that V for volume, all I have to do is take the volume name that I created down here, which was engine X store. Okay. And then I'm going to map that to that internal path. So that's user share engine X slash HTML. Wonderful. Now, if I go and run that, that's all nicely mapped for me. So if I go and check this out again, now it's running with the volume. Let's go and refresh this. I can still see welcome to Nginx, fine. But let's go and copy our file back in here too. So let's go find that command again. So we're going to copy the command in here. So we're going to copy that index.html with Docker is awesome back inside that container. Wonderful. But now that index.html is actually not sitting inside the container. It's actually sitting inside that volume, this permanent storage. Okay. Right. So that means what I can do is if I come up here onto my Docker desktop and I go into containers, I can go and delete this Nginx container now, delete it over here, refresh this and it won't work. It's going to time out for me eventually. But if I come back over here and I create that same container again and point it to the same store, i.e. the same volume, I will get my Docker is awesome back again. We have permanent storage for that container. Okay, that's cool. That's the basic concept. Let's move that over to container instances in Azure now and see how that will kind of work. So back over on the whiteboard here, if we go and create an Azure Container Instance, okay, let's do that in blue, an Azure Container Instance, and we do that for, again, Nginx in the cloud. We'll do this in a moment. We'll, we will go through the full demonstration as well. Um, we want permanent storage again, but we don't have a volume system with container instances. They're very basic. Uh, but what we do have is we have Azure Storage Accounts, okay? So what we can do is we can create an Azure storage account and inside that storage account, we can create a file share. All right. And what we can do is we can use that file share essentially as a volume to map the contents of that Nginx directory into the file share of that storage account. To do this, we need a couple of things, though. Uh, first of all, we actually need the storage account key and we need to create the storage account. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, what we also need to do is we also going to need to have a YAML file. The reason being is this connectivity piece here, i.e. making a volume with container instances, it doesn't actually allow you to do this through the graphical interface. So we're going to have to do this through commands in Azure to get this deployed correctly and connected to the right storage account. So let's start with the first piece of the puzzle. Let's go and create a storage account and let's go and find one of these keys to be able to connect to the storage account. So I'm now over here in my Azure portal. Uh, I'm going to go to create a resource group. We're going to create a new resource group. We're going to call it 
cont ints demo. Container instances demo. Great. Let's go and review and create that. All's well and good. Let's go to storage accounts down here and we'll create a very basic storage account. We don't need anything particularly fancy here. It's going to be stored in that same resource group and we're going to call this name uh, cont demo. We'll see if that's available. Yes, it is actually. It's actually available. Great. The primary service is going to be Azure Files. We'll run this on standard, pay as you go file shares, and we'll leave that on locally redundant storage. We don't need anything fancy with this at all. Uh, or we need to enable here public access from all networks. You could do this process in the future with private endpoints if you wanted to uh, and private links. Uh, but at the moment, we're keeping this as a simple demo. So this will go through the public access to this as well. We can leave everything else defaulted. It doesn't particularly matter at the moment for this demo. We don't need to particularly tune this storage account. I do have videos on Azure storage accounts that go into more detail on each of these features. So, you know, hashtag like and subscribe. You know the routine. Go back through all the videos. Uh, and you know what? Today, even if you do subscribe, watch a couple more videos. That's kind of how the algorithm works. It will start recommending you more of my previous content related to things like Azure. So if you enjoy this, there's more of it if you want to go through. All right, that's done. So let's go to that resource. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into file shares and we're going to create a file share. We're going to call this um, engine X store. OK. And we're going to go into backup and we don't want any backups for this at the moment because it's just a demo in the real world. You might want to back up your actual file shares uh, just in case you experience things like corruptions or more to the point. Not, not normally corruptions with, with storage accounts, you may accidentally delete something that you need to restore. So that's all done. What I need is I need these access keys down here, okay? This access key here is what I can use to give a container instance access to this storage account. Now, to do this, let me just um, copy that access key for the moment, and I'm gonna pop that into Notepad, okay? Just so I can come back to it. Remember, don't store your access keys in plain text. Very bad idea. This gives people complete access to this storage account if they have this key. So be very careful with it. So I just want to prove a point here by going to container instances. And if I create a container instance and I do this inside cont inst demo, container instance demo, you'll notice that through here I have I have options for the container details, I have options for the image, I have options for the networking, but I don't have options for the storage of this container. Okay, it's a little annoying. But if you have one of these things, a YAML file, this allows us to define this actual container instance inside this YAML file and then use this to actually deploy the container instance. So let's go and check out some of the options that I need to just change in here to get this working. Location UK South, actually let's make this a little bigger so we can actually read it a bit easier. The name of the container I'm going to deploy, the container instance I'm going to deploy is called file share demo. And that will be fine for the moment or the name of this deployment. The containers, Nginx testing mic. Okay, that's fine for the moment. And the image we're going to use is Nginx latest. Okay, that's cool. Uh, the mount path that user share Nginx HTML. Remember, that's the same mount path we use locally. It's the same container. We're going to redirect this to a volume called Nginx volume. So it, it's the same kind of system as we're using locally. It's losing volumes. But if we come down here, we can see that Nginx volume is actually being mapped to something else. It's being named, mapped to a file share and a storage account. Now, I need to change these around. So if I just pop up here and I go into my cont demo. So the name of my storage account is called cont demo. So I can go and grab that and I can go and pop that here into my storage account name. Wonderful. The share name. Uh, let's go back into file shares was called engine X store. So let's just make that make sure that's correct. Engine X store. Wonderful. And the storage account key, this nice big long one over here. And that's the key that I copied previously from the key section inside the storage accounts. If I go and paste that in there now, all of this information for the container instance deployment is actually created here in this YAML file. I just need to send this to Azure.
Since my account is already connected, I'm just going to pop this command straight in here. This is all we need, az container create, which will create a container instance for me in the resource group cont ins demo. And we're going to use this file, which is the Azure ACI deploy YAML file, which is this file right here inside my VS code. So let's go and run that. And that's going to deploy that for us to Azure. Remember, this option down here for this, these volumes are not available within the GUI itself. We have to do this via commands or via templates like I'm doing now with YAML. So that's now actually deploying for me. Uh, it's currently pending. It's going to take a couple of minutes to push this out. And then we can go and see what that actually looks like um, in our Azure storage accounts. All right, that's done. It's given me an output in JSON. That's fine. That's what Azure CLI tends to do. Let's go and check that out in the portal, make sure it's actually there. So if we go to contents demo and refresh this, we should find, there we go, there's my file share demo. If I go into this, I have an FQDM. Let's go and copy that and let's go and paste that into my browser over here. All right, so we're getting connection as timed out. Why is that? Well, let's go and have a look at the containers. Let's go and have a look at the container itself. Let's go and connect to it. Okay, so we're inside here. And let's go to uh, that directory path where the index.html is stored. So remember, cd uh, user slash engine x. Whoops. cd user cd uh, share <laughs> cd engine x. Uh, CD HTML. It's kind of a long way of doing it, but you'll see here in that HTML directory, there is no index. What we have to do is give it a file to actually go and host. So now we know that's mapped to this storage account. It's mapped to this file share right here. What we should be able to do is actually put something into this file share. So if we're going to browse, let's go to upload and let's go and browse the files and let's go and put that Docker is awesome index.html directly in here. So let's take that index.html from my Docker demo directory. Let's upload this because Nginx is looking for that index.html when it first starts. Now, if I go and refresh this, we should see Docker is awesome which means that what we can do is we can manipulate the files that the Nginx server is hosting just by manipulating the file share here. So that kind of completes deploying in very simple way, uh, a container instances container and connecting it to a permanent storage system within Azure. So as long as we redeploy that container and connect it to that same permanent file share storage, you'll get the same information every single time. And what you've also been able to see is that container instance file share storage, it literally is the volume system from Docker. And all we're essentially doing is we're mapping a volume that we create to a file share that exists inside an Azure storage account. I hope you enjoyed this demo and you'll join me next time for more demos on Docker and Azure and PowerShell and all the other fun stuff you find on my channel. Remember, hashtag like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.